for Scherzer, you have to think, Mike, if you're a Rangers fan and you're positive, well, Bruce Bochy said you have a full bullpen, so you can work on that. And perhaps give us one good time to the lineup. Max is a smart guy, crafty guy. I'll use all those kind of words and make the good adjustments from last time out. I think it's possible, and I'm going to tell you why, Adnan. Here we're going to go. We're going to go. We're going to look at a future Hall of Famer, all that. Can you bank on that? Well, not really. We'll see what we got. But there is history with Max Scherzer. I'm going to take you back to 2016. This is a winner-take-all. It's a five-game series in the NLDS. Six innings, one earned run. So when the table, you know, when there's a lot on the table riding on there, Max Scherzer has had the ability to come back. We saw, you know, game six, he had the crink in the neck, couldn't make the start. Is he going to be able to throw game seven here in 2019? Did as well. His start was okay. So this is the main set I want you to take a look at. Astros players going into yesterday, hitters. Fastballs, 95-plus miles per hour, 5 for 59. Look at the average in the slugging percentage. That is being dominated. So if there's something good that is possible that Max Scherzer actually was overly positive about his outing last time was the velocity. Let's take a look at what he showed early on the first inning when he faced the Houston Astros. These are all 95-plus mile-an-hour fastballs. He got Jose Abreu striking out, first pitch down in the zone with a lot of life, spotting the ball there. Maybe he got a little bit of a call, but it's the location that he has. So this is the key for me. That pitch that he strikes out Jeremy Pinon. Well, he sets it up slider, fastball down in the zone, and this is the way he punches him out. That's an off-speed pitch that starts in the low part of the strike zone and falls off the table. This is where he was a little bit rusty in the, that bases loaded situation with Martin Maldonado. He wanted to bury that pitch, threw it up uh, down in the zone, couldn't be blocked. One run came in. What does that do? It allows the hitter to kind of elevate, make him elevate the ball. Another situation here with Mauricio Dubon. He had him with two strikes, running around third, less than two outs. Two sliders, very non-competitive pitches. Has to come up with something in the zone. Dubon makes him pay with an RBI single to right center. So when I look at Max Scherzer and I say, okay, he hadn't pitched in 30 plus days. He got to start in game three. Vila was there. He felt like he had a lot more in the tank. That's what he said post-game interview. I think when you have that long layoff, Bo, your secondary pitches are the ones that you're, that, that feel and that timing's a little bit off. Maybe, you know, you have your four days off. That bullpen session in between on day three is where you kind of mix and match and, and feel your off-speed pitch. I'm with you, Adnan. If they can get him three innings, take him through the lineup one time. If he's doing well and the Vila's there, I think Max can give you a chance to win. Now, we hear Bruce Bochy say, all hands on deck. That means Montgomery as well. Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh. So the, there, there, there are some options, but he just can't give you a two-inning start and put you in a hole down 2 nothing or 3 nothing. Well, when you look at this decision that Bruce Bochy made when Max took the mound in the first game, knowing that it's been a long time since he pitched, this is what made Bruce Bochy a Hall of Fame manager, besides all the championships and everything. It's things like this. A lot of managers would have went and got Max Scherzer early in that game. But Bruce Bochy let him work through it, let him ride it out. They were up 2-0 at the time. That's going to pay dividends tonight because had he went and got him early, he would not have had a chance to work through some of the things that he needed to work through that you can't work through in the bullpen. Yeah. He actually needed that game action, even though he didn't get the start that he wanted. But Max Scherzer... Future Hall of Famer, he lives for moments like this. Lives for moments like this. that. 95, maybe 96, 97 tonight because he knows he can empty the tank. They got a full bullpen. He's saying to himself, if I go five, we're going to win this game. If I could turn it over to the bullpen and go five good innings, we're going to win this game. So for me, it's the decision that Bochi made early on in his start that allowed him to build up to where he's at and then the Hall of Famer himself and the adrenaline that he's going to have in tonight's game. So are you telling me Bruce Bochy gave away game three? He said, you know what? He We're didn't not give it away. This one's gonna... he, didn't, he, didn't, he didn't give it away, but he played the long game. Mm -hmm. He played the long game. Like, you can – let's just take tonight, for example. Right. If Scherzer was to go out there tonight and hit a bump in the road in the first and second, he's gone. Right. Because at that point, Bochy knows that this is it, lose or go home. At the point where they were up 2-0, he's saying, I may need this guy again this serious. So I can't go with a quick hook right now for the very reason of what we're looking at tonight, yeah. which is the Game 7. Perseverance. That's why he's the Hall of Famer. Yeah, we'll see if it pays off.